Hey friends, as a volunteer life skills teacher in building and construction, I'm building this staff house here with some local boys and what we're doing for the outside cladding is just some simple fibre cement sheeting and these sheets are 2.4 metres long and 1.2 metres wide so that's a pretty standard size there for cement sheets and it's a pretty ideal cladding for walls and it um, goes on really fast just with simple flathead clout nails here and it's yeah just a quick installation lasts a long time because cement sheet doesn't it's soft as wood you can chisel it you can cut it with guillotines you can grind it with a um, diamond blade uh, grinding wheel um, but it doesn't rust it doesn't rot and it lasts a long long time so it's a pretty good option when it comes to lining the outside of the house we um, carpenters call it cladding and cladding basically means um, what you're putting on the outside of a wall to keep the weather out such as weather boards or fiber cement lining some people even put just tin like uh, uh, roofing which is also pretty tough um, cement sheet is an excellent option but it's pretty brittle if you throw a stone through that it's going to break and, and crack it and that's something you know that won't happen to tin or to um, weather boards wooden weather boards or something like that this cement sheet is six millimeters thick so that's the thickness in there and that's a pretty ideal thickness um, for external cladding you can use it inside as well there's sort of different um, uh, thicknesses for inside of a house you can get it thinner in four millimeters and sometimes in three but 4.5 millimeters is good for the inside of a house but six mil is ideal and um, the way that it's cut is with these guillotine here like this and that breaks off so those guillotine cutters are a pretty good option uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to so that takes a bit of coordination but they're excellent because you don't need power and once you get used to it it's quite fast even faster than a grinder but of course grinding is a really good option as well now I wanted to show you here on my windows so we obviously have installed our window frames I'll show you over here our window frames before putting the um, the fibro lining the cladding because you know we're going right up to the window frame there and then leaving basically a small three to five millimeter gap I'm going to fill that then with um, basically just some external gap filler or a paintable polyurethane sealant mastic which is like a silicon but it's paintable you don't want to use normal silicon because you just can't paint the wall up to that and it'll reject the paint and um, these sort of FC walls these cement sheet walls really do want a good lick of paint when you're done with them clean them off well get all the dust off it and then you want to give it a good undercoat of paint and two top coats of paint even three um, to last a long time but I grew up in an old fibro shack in Australia and uh, with a single mother and she was poor but that place is you know still going strong and um, hasn't fallen apart yet good old Australian hardwood this here is a softer wood usually we're building with pine these days um, and I want to show you on these um, cement sheets with your frame if the cement sheet is 1.2 meters wide here what you want to do is maybe put two studs into the middle of the cement sheet spaced at 400 millimeters another 400 millimeters comes to 800 millimeters and then the end is your 12. so you've got roughly let's say that it's um yeah it's it's two two stud spacings in the middle of the sheet and that gives you only about 350 millimeters between the studs for the sheet which is quite strong you've got a row of noggins in the middle of the sheet there but you know that's a really solid finish and that's not going to break or die anytime soon how you doing boys we're going to get the cladding on this place this week aren't we yes. yeah we're smashing up these guys are doing really well we've got some senior local carpenters and some juniors who are learning as well this is dominic my main man and he's putting in some windows here for bathrooms which is really sort of looks like a bit of a dodgy setup but what we're doing is we've framed up the frame and then just set the cement sheet back and then all we're going to do with that 
is basically um, tacked with a stapler, some fly screen to it, and then we're also going to staple with some fencing staples, some solid fencing staples, a security screen to that, and then that window is finished. Could put a hood over that. Um, when you think about the overhang here, these windows don't have a lot of overhang over the top of them, but the roof is coming over the top of the windows a long way, so all you basically have to do is fill in over the top of those windows, and if not much rain gets to it, it's fine. Obviously, if a lot of rain gets to it, because it's sort of um, further out than a 30 degree um, pitch from the roof out to the top of the window, then you want to put um, some sort of a sill on top of the window, some sort of flashing, um, so that that keeps the rain off it. But yeah, this is a pretty simple design, pretty solid, should last a long time. It's out here in the bush with this giant big numbunga tree and another big numbunga at the back of us there. Good stuff. Good simple, simple building simple setup we don't have regulations out here regulations are in the first world in the western world for a good reason so people don't build um dodgy buildings and do things that aren't worth um uh, having around a community you know you don't want buildings being unsafe or unsound um but with some good skills you can get out there into communities that don't have building skills or get out there in with a simple country setup and uh, maybe with an owner builder ticket you could build yourself something really simple and really cheap and relatively quick because um, the building process the more complicated and uh, long it takes obviously you're up for more money and time and effort and headaches than you really want to be in for so that's um cladding a, a timber framed house with um, cement sheet and at the bottoms of the frames there I might just show you this last thing I'm leaving a 15 millimeter drip line so at the bottom of the frame as you can see there the cement sheet comes over the slab this is if you've got a slab on ground foundation the cement sheet comes down the frame and over the slab about 15 millimeters sort of you know half an inch to an inch and that just ensures that the weather runs down the slab and doesn't get into the house. If you have, have any issues with termites, you've got a visual inspection there at the bottom of the frame that you can um, sort of see if termites are getting up into the frame. These frames are treated. They're H3 treated with poisons that um, stop the termites from eating them and the rot from rotting them. Um, but uh, yeah, you can spray poison around the perimeter or up into that crack to stop anything getting up into your, in, eating into your frame or into, into the wood inside the house. Okay, so that's um, cement sheet lining, cladding. A really good option for simple building.